Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome to our last day of Reader's Workshop, yay! Thank Woo. you so much for joining us, and I know we have, uh, we're back to our Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug, but we're going to be using both stories, so that's why Miss T decided to have two interactive read-alouds, because teachers are going to model Tiny T-Rex, and then you guys are going to model it with the other book we read yesterday, The Wall in the Middle of the Book. So today, we're going to be working on the skill of point of view, and you might be thinking, huh, I've heard that phrase before, but I have no idea what that means. But don't worry, we're going to be practicing that today. And there's so many different ways to explain point of view. But the way we're talking about point of view today is we want to figure out who's telling the story. So whose point of view is the story in? Because we can talk about point of view when we talked about opinion texts or when we're writing opinion because we want to figure out what's your point of view or what's your opinion. But in reading today, what we're focusing on, it's not your opinion or my opinion. It's how is this, who's telling the story? Which point of view is the story written in? Okay. And so we have some um, recipe cards of a step for you of how you can do that with any book you read. Okay. You can read part of the story. That's your first step. And I've screenshotted parts of the story so we can really practice the skill. Then you're going to look for some keywords. So these are the keywords we call uh, pronouns. Can you say pronouns? Pronouns. Pronouns, pronouns are um, words we use to replace nouns. Instead of saying, for example, if I kept on talking about Ms. Kimowich, I don't want to keep saying Ms. Kimowich, Ms. Kimowich, Ms. Kimowich. I can say she instead, right? So these are some pronouns that we use to replace the over repetition of words. So we can say I, me, my, we, he, she, it, and they. So we're going to look for those keywords to help us figure out whose point of view it's in. Because after we look for those keywords, we're gonna, we're gonna ask ourselves, well, who is using that pronoun? That's gonna help us figure out who's talking in the story and which point of view the story is in. So we're gonna try that right now. And I keep my little poster up so that our teachers can see and you can see how we're doing this. So we're gonna do the first step, read part of the story. So I'm gonna have Ms. Rosales, can you read the part of the story for us? Sure. It says, I have tiny arms. It is very difficult to hug with tiny arms. Awesome. And now we're all going to be word detectives and we're going to look for some of those keywords that I mentioned in this bubble. And teachers, when you see a keyword, can you give me a thumbs up? And we're going to write those keywords down in our little box right here. Ms. Hernandez, what do you think? I see the word I. Mm -hmm. I also see the word I. Awesome. And I don't see any other keyword besides I. We can just use I. And then Let's ask ourselves, well, who is using that pronoun? Who is saying I? Ms. Akimowicz? Um, Tiny T is saying I because yeah. he's telling the story. So now we know that Tiny T is telling this story because he's, he's I. He's saying I. Awesome. So let's try it again. There's another part of the text. And can I have Ms. Akimowicz, can you read the text for us? Yeah. Hugging almost seems impossible for a Rex as tiny as me, but I will try anyway. Pointy needs me. Okay, so we're going to be some word detectives right now. We're going to look for some of those key words. Again, I, me, my, we, he, she, it, they. So what keywords do you see, Miss Rosales? I love that you already gave me something to think about before she started to read. So I detected the word me and I. Cool. So we can have more than one word. And I also agree with you. I saw me and I saw I. So Miss Hernandez, whose point of view is this written in? I think it's a uh, tiny T again, mm -hmm. because when I'm looking at the word I, I will, uh, I will try anyway. We're looking at tiny T who's trying to find a way to hug his friend. Perfect. Cause we were asking ourselves who's using that pronoun. It's tiny T again. Now you might think miss T, this is so easy. It's always going to be tiny T, but we want to be careful as readers. We don't always want to assume sometimes there can be patterns, but we really want to support our thinking with evidence. So I love how Ms. Hernandez said, well, I will try anyway. So we know, we know who was trying in this story. It was tiny T. Awesome. We're going to model one more for you. And then I'm going to have Ms. Hernandez. Can you read this story for us? My arms are still tiny and my hugs are still tiny, but I will do my very best because you are my very best friend. Awesome. Thank you. So now we're going to look for those keywords and see, hmm, what keywords do we see in this text? Ms. Kimalich? I see my, I, 
My and I. Awesome. My and I. And then Ms. Rosales, who is using that pronoun? Um, that's Tiny T talking. I was thinking about maybe it was the other character, Pointy, but then I was thinking, would that make sense? No. You know, it doesn't make sense because we know that he's the one who's been trying to make Pointy feel better, right? So we know it's Tiny T. And now because we've looked at different parts of the text in Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug, we, it's always told in the point, most of it is Tiny T. We can say that most of the book is told in the point of view of Tiny T. So that's how we decide what the point of view of the whole book is. It's if we see a pattern of, oh, it's Tiny T. Oh, it's Tiny T. Oh, it's Tiny T. Then Tiny T must be the one who's mostly telling the story. So now it's your turn to try it, and you're going to try it with the wall in the middle of the book. And I'm just going to read to you the text, the parts of the text that I chose. Because remember, we always read part of the story, we look for our keywords, and then we ask who is using that pronoun. So this one says, if the ogre ever caught me, he'd eat me up, right? So again, I read part of it. Now you're going to look for the keywords and you're going to write the keywords right here and then ask yourself who's using the keyword and tell me whose point of view it is. And then the next page, I want you to try it again here too. That's why I'm glad there's a wall in the middle of the book and that I'm on this side of it. So again, look for your keywords and then figure out who is using that pronoun and write them in the point of view right here. And then those two parts of the story is going to help you figure out, well, who's mostly telling you um, the story? Whose point of view is it in? So we are excited to see how you're going to apply this skill because I know you're really paying attention. And if we went too fast, you can always rewind and replay the video and see how we did those in our steps. So thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Don't forget to subscribe.